Thank you, Mayor. Council members present. Council members Fulcher. Apparently, we're having a technical uh, issue. We're going to pause for just a second. Yes. Okay. Um, Councilmember Davis's uh, computer is non functional. He needs a plug in. Thought the elves were supposed to come in at night and fix everything, not uh, not break everything. <laughs> I know. I'm like... All right. Look. So I'm waiting to hear from Jody on whether or not you're ready to go, and I'm waiting to hear from Ed Councilmember Davis to see when you're ready to go. Do I understand that people cannot hear us remotely? Is that yes. what I'm understanding? All right, are we are we all good? Okay, is there any objection to proceeding? Everybody's technology is working at least well enough for now? All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. That's item number four, public comments. This is a time set aside for members of the public to speak to the city council on any issue related to the city of Monroe accept any quasi-judicial matter that is subject to a public hearing. Uh, three minutes are afforded to each speaker. I'm gonna ask that the uh, clerk please uh, place a three minute timer up on the screen. Keep looking at that monitor. I wanna look at this monitor over here, sorry. I think she's got it. All right. All right. Um, sounds good. So we'll first turn to the audience. Is there anybody that would like to speak to the council this evening? Uh, come on up and uh, please state your name and area of residence for the record. Um, let me see if I've got, yep, I got the right microphone. That's good. Uh, so you could, uh, state your name and area of residence. Then we've got the three minute timer up so you can yep. uh, check that. Uh, my name is Ben Metzger. Uh, it's my wife, Olivia. My son, Israel, back here. We live on Lewis Street, Monroe. Uh, we moved in about a month ago now. Uh, we really like the city of Monroe. We have my brother-in-law and his whole family live two minutes from us. We're right in between both sets of parents within 10 minutes. This is where we wanna plan our roots. Uh, we wanna be here long-term. Um, the issue I wanna bring forward is that of homelessness. Um, and we've been surprised by the pervasiveness of the issue, um, especially in our area. Uh, very, very early on at our home, we found human waste on our property um, and shortly after discovered that a drug addict often slept out behind our cars on the backside of our house. Um, the cops have been alerted several times by us and the neighbors, but he keeps coming back because he knows there's nothing that anyone is going to or I don't know can do about it right now. Um, my wife feels unsafe walking through her car by herself. Um, she feels unsafe going outside at night. Um, and I, part of this fear is that the very first day we were in our home, 
a homeless man cut through our front yard, through our backyard to get to the back of our house. Um, I want to underscore the fact that I don't feel comfortable leaving my wife and my son at home alone right now. Um, when I go to work, just with this guy out there, um, she doesn't feel safe when I'm gone. It's not a good situation. Um, when we first moved into the house, we talked to a neighbor and they said, don't go to the park down the street unless you're with a large group. Um, it's not just us who feel this way. And it is sad that a community place, a community gathering place like a park has been completely neglected um, to the point where its taxpayers are, in, are unable to use the property um, without fear of, you know, being harmed or just feeling unsafe. Um, so the bottom line, my, my family likes Monroe a lot. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to plant our roots. Um, we also know that the city has a lot of plans for the next couple of decades. Um, but you can't grow this place without making your citizens first feel safe and keep them safe. Um, and this isn't an impossible ask. I know that there are a lot of cities that are further along than Monroe. I'm close by you have Snohomish, like Woodenville. Um, even Bellevue, these places where homeless people don't live in cardboard boxes on Main Street. And it's a problem that needs to be fixed. Um, so that's all I've got. Thank you all for your time. I'm sure I'll get to know all of you well at some point because I'll be around at future meetings, I'm sure. But thank you all for your time. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and um, if you are remote and would like to speak to the council this evening, please go ahead and hit star nine if you're on the phone or please raise your hand if you're in uh, Zoom. Um, Councilmember Hanford, did you have something? Yeah, just for clarification, uh, was the address stated at the beginning? Just so I know the. Ben, did you state your address? I state my address. I stated the address. I can give the address. Like... You don't need to give the address if okay. you want to. You can, but you don't need to. It, so, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Which right. which street was it? I'm which sorry. Street? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Who had the address? The street is on the. The staff can the staff can follow up with you, Chair uh, okay. Councilmember. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, the people that we have online. Uh, first person I have is Ed Engel. So, uh, Ed, we're going to go ahead and bring you forward to the panel. Okay, Ed, you should be in the panel. You should be able to hear me. Give me two seconds. All right. Hi, my name is Ed Engel, and I am the Mobility Justice Advocate of the Snohomish County Transportation Coalition, or SNOWTRAC for short. Uh, SNOWTRAC is a mobility management coalition that advocates for connecting people and communities in Snohomish County and beyond with safe, equitable, and accessible transportation. To do this, we convene public, nonprofit, and private transportation and human service agencies to identify mobility gaps and opportunities, especially for our priority populations, including people with disabilities, older adults, youth, low-income households, people of color, and tribes. A unifying issue across our priority populations is low or no access or ability to use a personal vehicle. In addition, priority populations tend to be disproportionately impacted by poor land use patterns and transportation options that increase exposure to air pollutants and household housing and transportation costs, which in turn decrease the life expectancy and social economic mobility. During the committee meeting earlier this evening, staff presented updates to the land use and transportation elements of the comprehensive plan. As Monroe updates its comprehensive plan, SnowTrack provides best practices endorsed by such organizations such as AARP, PolicyLink, and the National Association of City Transportation Officials. We recommend setting a goal to reach zero traffic fatalities, zero injuries within the next decade, and establishing a data-driven strategic plan to reach the goal using the U.S. Department of Transportation Safe Systems Approach, setting goals to increase housing and transportation affordability and to become an aged and ability-friendly community by allowing for abundant and dense housing options for seniors to age in place, fully funding and implementing ADA projects to realize the city's trans transition plan within the next decade, building an all ages and abilities bikeway network that connects schools, parks, shops, and major destinations with direct, comfortable bikeways, Implementing more robust automated speed enforcement with revenue directed towards physical safety improvements to the targeted streets. Completing key citywide and regional trails, including the US2 shared use path, use path 
from the fairgrounds to downtown, uh, and then reducing parking requirements on new development and requiring new projects to implement transportation demand management strategies by contracting with a transportation management association. With that I conclude my comment. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you very much, Ed. We're going to go ahead and move you back to the attendees list. And uh, the next person that we have who has signed up to speak is G. Wood. Uh, we will move G. Wood into the panel. G. Wood, you are now in the panel. If you could um, please take yourself off of mute and uh, turn on your video if you like. And please state your name and area of residence or affiliation with the city for the record, please. Hi, my name is Gabriel Wood. I am a property owner at 302 South Ferry Avenue in Monroe. And I just wanted to welcome Ben to the neighborhood, but also emphasize that some of the homeless issues that we're experiencing and some of the people in our community are part of our community. And they've been a part of our community for several years. And a lot of us <clears throat> who have roots in this town have gotten to know them and try to treat them humanely. And I think that's a good approach to all these issues. Okay, thank you very much. Do you have anything further? No, that's it. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. We'll move you back to the attendees list. Thank you. If there's anybody else that is interested in speaking this evening, if you're in the audience, please raise your hand. If you're online, please raise your hand remotely. All right, seeing none, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. That item would be the consent agenda. I turn to the council. Council Member Scarborough, go ahead. I move to accept the consent agenda. Yeah, for a second. Okay, do, I understand that the motion is to approve the consent agenda as provided in the packet. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And I have a uh, motion from Councilmember Scarborough, a second from Councilmember Hanford. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is new business. And I will turn to our clerk. Wyckoff, whoops, we hit the we hit the button at the same time. So I'm going to go for it. Okay, you there go. We go. All right, you've got the ball. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, before you tonight are proposed amendments to the Council Rules of Procedure. Um, in the uh, track changes was in your packet, as well as a detailed list of all of the amendments. I will briefly go over um, some of them. Could you uh, move to the next slide? Oh. If, if there is an next well, slide. There is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, multitasking, not my yeah. favorite thing sometimes. Um, so one of the items that we are um, requesting amendment is that back on February 28th, council voted to add human services as one of the tasks for the public safety committee. So this amendment will just memorialize that. Um, the majority of the other uh, amendments, hold on, let me find the next page I was going to go to, are related to public hearings. Um, we did make some minor amendments to the quasi-judicial public hearing process just to be in line with the legislative. However, um, because of the nature of quasi-judicial, not all of the amendments that we made to legislative are a fit for quasi-judicial. So uh, to briefly go over the proposed amendments, um, one of them is related to um, comments from the audience during a public hearing and that they will be directed to the presiding officer and council as a whole and will be reasonably germane to the topic of the hearing. Um, we also added um, making out of order comments or taking actions that disrupt the meeting may be subject to removal from the meeting rather than shall. Um, and as a side note, uh, mayor and staff will be working with uh, the city attorney to uh, create perhaps an appendix to the rules of procedure that outlined that particular piece of it a little bit in more detail. That's some work we're gonna be doing a little later in the year. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm going backwards. Uh, uh, Clerk Wyckoff, just a second. Councilmember Scarborough, go ahead. Uh, I was going to make a suggestion back under the uh, if somebody gets out of hand, it says they may be removed. Might you like to add a sentence that would uh, require a majority vote of the council just to cover the presiding officer against any allegations of being arbitrary or capricious? I mean, if, you, if the presiding officer wanted to remove somebody and you had the, the vote of the council, then that person that you were removing wouldn't have a a way to imply that the residing officer was being prejudiced, just a thought. Yeah, um, so let's think a little bit about that. If we've got something okay. that's happening that is uh, dangerous or, thankfully this hasn't happened, right? Um, but if we have something that's escalating quickly, we may not have time for a vote. Okay. So um, I I like the idea that that if it's something that is slower moving, that by having the language may in there that the presiding officer may turn to the body and ask for that motion to have them removed. I think that gets it uh, to me at what um, Jody was talking about, what Clerk Wyckoff was talking about with having an appendix. Cause I, I too, just like you council member Scarborough wanna be very careful on exercising this. Um, we haven't had a need to do that yet. I hope that we won't ever have to do that. Um, but it would be my intent to work with um, our attorney to draft something to bring forward to council, which might lead to either an appendix um, or uh, maybe some more detail in this uh, section. Um, yeah, I, I myself am not opposed if the council wanted to add something like that. Um, I'm not opposed to doing that, but um, also if the council would like us to put more thought into it and bring forward something like a memo and then incorporate some of that into a, another update, I'm fine with that too. I'll leave that up to, to the rest of the council. It's just a thought I had if, if you as a presiding officer or the pro tem yep. is comfortable the way it is, that's okay. I just had that thought while I was reading. I appreciate that. Um, thank you. Uh, council Member Gamble, go ahead. Yeah, actually, it's, I think it's a very good, if the way it's written, I mean, I, I think we should specify because if it's life, you know, kind of, uh, health, uh, immediate, imminent danger type of deal, then yeah. He's going to, yeah, we're going to have Correct. people jumping on the person. Correct. But the way it's written, it's like out of, um, what does it say? I want to get the quote right. Uh, out of order comment. That's very subjective. Yeah. And it would be something that, you know, if you don't have the right presiding officer that could make that determination. So that would protect. Okay. I would I would love to see something that would specify that. So that's okay. Um, so uh, one of the things that I could invite the council members to do is while Clerk Wyckoff is writing, if you wanted to draft up a sentence, we could certainly see if the council wanted to make a an amendment, you know, make a, a motion and in that include the language you'd want added. Again, I am not at all opposed to it. Um, so uh, we can also uh, spend a little bit more time coming up with better language. I think my preference if the council is comfortable with this is to adopt it sooner than later as we will have legislative matters coming to the council and the way things are right now, there's a long script to read. Um, so, all right. Um, so we can come back to that uh, council member Gamble and uh, I'm gonna turn back to Clerk Wyckoff to continue coming through and then we'll- And I'm gonna actually, oh, Mr. I'm Lell. Sorry, uh, Attorney Lell, just a second. Okay, Attorney Lell, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, with respect to involving the Council in a direct vote um, in relation to potentially ejecting a, a, an out-of-order speaker from the chambers or the meeting, I, I do think that that probably warrants some additional legal and staff review before the Council votes to uh, consider an amendment to that effect. The, the mayor under state law is given the exclusive authority to preside over the meetings. And I, I have an initial concern as to whether or not um, the, the proposal to involve the council in that process might intrude upon the mayor's uh, statutory authority. That's something I would need to look into further. 
All right, thank you. Um, any follow-up questions from the council for Mr. Lowe? All right, thank you. All right, Clerk Wycock. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, continuing on to uh, page 80 of your packet or page 11 of the procedures under legislative public hearing procedures uh, under speaker sign-in, we added and area of residence or association with the city of Monroe to be consistent with our public comments. Um, this is one item that we did not change in the quasi-judicial because it is specific to a single parcel, we do ask for the address during a quasi-judicial hearing. Um, and I'm sure Attorney Lowell could elaborate if you needed him to. Um, the next paragraph, we, um, we wanted to make sure that we're staying consistent with our current practice. And so added a sentence that says, unless otherwise specified, the amount of time allowed per speaker shall be three minutes. It still allows council to authorize longer, but that's we just wanted to call that out. Um, under the public hearing process, um, after we had our first public hearing, we realized that the script was going to be probably longer than the public hearing itself. And so um, we decided, um, and with the legislative committee's um, blessing, we added um, that the presiding officer is gonna introduce the agenda item, open the hearing, and announce that the following rules of order are included in the agenda packet and available on the website, and that the presiding officer may read the rules of order aloud. And then the rules of order are as follows. Um, that allows uh, the mayor or the mayor pro tem, whoever's presiding over the meeting to make a kind of a, a call on whether or not this is a, one of those hearings that we should probably read them aloud or or not. Um, we added the comments shall be directed to the officer and the body as a whole again in that section. Uh, the next big one is that um, the presiding officer notes that all written or otherwise recorded comments received before the published deadline have been added to the record and forwarded to city council. Um, we added that after the staff report, the presiding officer asks council if they have any clarifying questions and then goes on to public comment. And then after public comment, the presiding officer asks if council has any additional questions to ask of staff. And that is about, yeah, that's the last significant change that we made. And I am available to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, I feel that what's been amended here is more in line with what we currently do. So I think the, the rhythm of going into a legislative um, public hearing will be more consistent with what you're accustomed to. And it provides some flexibility to be able to read things uh, into the record if necessary or to alert uh, people who are here. Um, I will say this, that um, I will work with staff over the next couple of weeks or so to, to get more information about um, what to do in the event that somebody should be removed from uh, chambers. And, um, and we'll see about uh, how we can add uh, some, you know, some, something where at least the council, if the mayor doesn't take action, that the council could certainly request it or something. So maybe there's some way that we can um, uh, come up with something to address those concerns. Um, Council Member Scarborough, go ahead. My my concern wasn't that the council should have a vote in saying he should or shouldn't or she should or should be removed from the, the meeting. My comments were based on CYA of the uh, presiding officer, just so the person in the audience doesn't feel like it was an arbitrary movement on their part. Not that you, you know, what Zach said probably mutes my point that the, the government says you can do it, that that may be all you need. I just, I just was concerned about if you or they or the pro tem had to do it, that somebody could come back and say he didn't like me, she didn't like me, et cetera. So, but if Zach says that you have the right and the law says you have it, and we as a city, aren't worried about repercussions of somebody not liking having been thrown out of a meeting, that's okay with me. That, that was the only reason I brought it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll say that I'm very concerned about that. Uh, people have freedom of speech. And so when they come here to the podium, I'm, you know, I understand that 
we need to allow that freedom of speech to occur within the designated time frame. They need to be uh, to have the same access that any other person would have. Um, we've had people come in and, and use four letter words with us. Um, I'm understanding that we are supposed to allow that uh, to a certain degree. And so um, we, you know, where I'm going in my thought process is that we need to make certain that there is a memo, an addendum, or something that makes it very clear what the legal risks are uh, and what the criteria are uh, for making it acceptable to have somebody removed. Um, and like I said, we haven't had to have that happen yet. I think the, the one time we came close to something was in the first year of me serving. So it would have been about eight years ago, uh, eight and a half years ago. And um, all we did was make a statement at the beginning that let's make certain everybody's civil. And things got a little heated, but at the same time, they didn't quite reach the point where somebody had to be uh, ejected from the meeting. I know that a couple of the council members that were here while I was gone <laughs> between council and mayor that you had a lot of other hearings where people came in and, and things may have been more uh, lively, I guess would be what I'll, I'll stick with for now. Um, but um, I, I do wanna make certain that there is something in place. And uh, if there's a checks and balance, you know, the way it's currently written, if you ever have a concern about something, you can always do point of order. And uh, that's a parliamentary procedure. I think you can do point of order and, and say this person's being unruly. Can the mayor please uh, enforce the, uh, the rules of procedure and uh, remind them that they need to be, you know, follow these criteria. So that that may be an option. And then if a mayor ejects somebody, I'd imagine that at least the council could could say point of order. Um, I don't feel that this is being fairly done mm -hmm. and uh, have a discussion or make some sort of motion. But I'll get more information. We'll get more information from uh, Attorney Lowell and uh, get back to the council. His hands Thank up. You. Oh, whose hands up? Sackville. Attorney, he's not up there. <laughs> okay, um, I need. This is why I need one more monitor. I don't need one more monitor. <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I think your your summary, I think, was very accurate. I just wanted to add, it's an extremely high bar legally to eject someone from an open public meeting. And the mayor's comments, I believe, were very accurate in that respect. Um, it's a very, very high constitutional standard. Um, the, the, the council's business at the meeting actually has to be either disrupted or an imminent threat of being disrupted in order to exercise that what is essentially a very draconian remedy. So um, I'm happy to work with staff to come back with a, a kind of a, a more detailed description of what the current legal standard is for that. But I do want the council to be aware that it, it is a very, very high bar. It, and simple use of profanity, although that can be prohibited by your rules of procedure as inappropriate conduct, um, is typically not in and of itself a, a basis for rejecting someone from the meeting. Thank you very much, um, Attorney Lowell. Council Member Fulcher, go ahead. So I think that um, for, the court, for the short time that we had the long drawn out um, introductions at the beginning of each public hearing, I think what we were trying to accomplish was just to, to make sure that every, every um, T was crossed and I was dotted in a CYA, as you said. Um, I think that having the website um, have the rules and procedures, I mean, the rules there that, like what we expect from someone during a, a public hearing, that's great because we are in an age of everyone referring to their phones. Um, in that order, I think that on our sign-in sheet, we should just add a QR code that brings us straight, brings the people straight to the, um, what we expect, you know, just welcome. We're glad for your comments. Please be aware these are our uh, expectations of, of behavior. Okay. I'll ask staff to look into putting a QR code on the sheet. I think that's a great idea. All right, uh, anything else? Okay, um, and you're done with your presentation, Clerk Wyckoff. Mm -hmm. So I turn to council. If you, if you have no further questions or certainly requested action on the screen for your consideration. Council Member Hanford, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I am fine with the written proposals as is uh, just so that we can get this part of it done and in the meantime uh, 
if you have attorney will look into that uh, but i'm fine with with the wording i i, I feel like it's good so uh, i'm going to move to approve resolution 2023-002 amending the monroe city council rules of procedure Second. okay i have a motion from council member hanford a second for council from council member gamble for the request to action uh, 6.1 new business that, which is showing on the screen any discussion on the motion Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? All opposed? Sorry, I was waiting for everybody to say favor or opposed. Um, all right, thank you. Motion passes 6 0. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda, and that item would be Councilmember Reports. So I'll go ahead and start off on the end there with Councilmember Scarborough. I have nothing to report tonight. Thank all right, you. thank you. Councilmember Hanford. Thank you, Mary. Yes, uh, I enjoyed the open house at the uh, middle school, and it was really great to see the staff, just everybody stepping up and uh, partaking and uh, seeing the citizens involved. It was, it was great to witness and observe all the different ideas. So that's great. Thank you. Councilmember Kenny. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also was at the comp plan event and it was very well done and enjoyed it a lot. Also attended a dinner on Thursday with council members Hanford and Fulcher uh, with our Snohomish County elected officials. And that was really wonderful. My first time ever. And last but not least, track is back. We have our first track meet tomorrow in Arlington. So I encourage all of you to come out to Monroe High School on May 3rd and May 24th and cheer on our track team for Monroe. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Fulcher. Um, ditto the uh, comp plan meeting, the SDC dinner, and also the 522 meeting to uh, revive our ever continuing fight, finished 522, um, that we had on April 12th. So, and I really appreciated the um, Department of Transportation brave man coming out and answering some good questions. I um, I was a little sad about our turnout being a little small, but I, I understand we had pretty good turnout online, so, for which I am grateful. And I am um, excited to keep that that bell ringing so we can someday get moving on that project. So, thank it. you. Councilmember Davis? Uh, nothing this evening, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gamble? Yeah, I'll just echo on the comp plan. I was not able to stay the whole uh, night, but uh, it just well run. Um, you know, the I liked the visuals and the stickers, and uh, I will say the stickers reflected some of the comments we heard tonight uh, on where people don't feel safe, um, and that was you know a large group uh, there that uh, all agreed in the same location. So definitely something that we we do need to address. Um, but yeah, it was very well run. I was very encouraged to see the amount of participation that was cross-functional. We had uh, folks from all over, uh, cause that was the other thing, you know, being able to see with the stickers where people live, now they were putting where they were from, uh, that were there and we had representation from all over, all over the city. So it was great. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on, uh, to the, Staff and department reports. We're going to start off with Chief Jolly. Chief Jolly, can you hit your microphone so I know which one is you? All right, your seat sixteen. Living. Much appreciated. All right, Chief, seat sixteen. <laughs> seat sixteen. Speech. Uh, good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, the council report is in your packet. If you have any questions, I would just point out a couple things anecdotal in nature, and that uh, one of the incidents described on the first page does mention uh, gun was involved in the arrest of that person. We are seeing more guns involved and in being carried by people here in Monroe. Even yesterday, uh, we had an individual on a motorcycle run from us, which is now again becoming a common theme even here in Monroe. Uh, that person was unable to make a turn on turn place and subsequently crashed their motorcycle. And we were able to take him into custody after that, but a gun was found on that individual. So uh, we are seeing some effects of some of the things that have been insulated from uh, what I refer to geography wise as the I-5 corridor and some of those things. Uh, it, it's becoming a little more prevalent here. And so one thing we're doing in conjunction with other Snohomish 
uh, police agencies, uh, we're going to categorize all those times where we do have a gun and or uh, when people do take off from the police uh, so we can track that statistically. Uh, we'll get back to you if those are significant numbers, we'll include them in the statistics. So thank you for your support and appreciate being here tonight. Thank you. Questions for Chief Jolly? Councilmember Gamble, go ahead. It's kind of a, it's a question, but it's also, I, I should have brought it up during my report um, because I know one of the biggest areas of concern, or one of the things we were hoping we would get out of the legislature during this, and I know there's still a time for uh, emergency session, all that kind of stuff, but the possession uh, and, and them addressing the, whether it's misdemeanor, gross misdemeanor, uh, and we have no action as of right now on that law expiring on July 1st. And I know that the county council is already, mm -hmm. hey, what are we going to do locally? So I would just ask, what's our plan? Or what's, and, and maybe we could get that on the radar because yep, it's anything, on the radar. Yep. Okay. If anything, I don't trust, I mean, I don't trust them to get anything done down there. Uh, so maybe we could bring that back later. Yeah. Uh, so I'm meeting with staff on Monday and um, our, our and our prosecuting attorney uh, to discuss uh, what our options are. And um, knowing that there may or may not be a resolution out of Olympia, um, but we, uh, I did contact staff yesterday and started having that more in-depth conversation. Um, I think people actually thought that the legislature was gonna do something. Yeah. And uh, they obviously didn't. Um, so uh, anyway, we'll get back to staff in the next couple of weeks as we get info. and. We are aware that status quo right now, we're looking at July 1st. So we, we know that there's a short time frame to make that happen, but it's um, something that we can achieve. Okay, great. And maybe what we do, well, what would be public record? Because I would like to consider it in conjunction with what Snohomish County is doing. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Uh, yep. We, um, and just to that point, um, for you and also for the record, well, one of the things I'm concerned about is having regulations that are too substantially different between jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll be we'll be looking at that and um, and then having a discussion internally about what that means um, and what might be different for the city versus the county. But uh, and then we'll come forward to the council. Perfect. All right. Anything um, anything further for Chief Jolly? All right. Thank you very much, Chief. Uh, next one then would be Public Works, and that would be Director Roberts which is Director Roberts, so go ahead. I get my own mic, how about that? Big deal. You're the only one along with the council members that ha has a name, so. I should probably trade with Becky then. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, good evening, everyone. Just run you through the report real quickly. Uh, leading off, we have something that kind of happens in the background of government is impactful, very impactful to a few people and a few residents here in Monroe. Uh, not that impactful to the masses, but it's the CRS program. We put a lot of work into that program. We also take pride in the fact that we have been rated a level five, which is the top rating for CRS multiple cycles in a row now. And it roughly equates to 25% off of flood insurance costs for those that live in, in those high hazard areas. So it allows them to stay in their residence. Uh, moving on through the next item would be the pre-design work that's going on uh, with WashDOT. Uh, for the Lewis Street overlay project. WashDOT is incorporating what is now Complete Streets. Uh, the council is aware of the Complete Streets ordinance that we have here in Monroe. In fact, I think all of you participated in that process. Um, and now WashDOT is bringing those, those uh, active transportation and protecting pedestrians, those type of principles to Monroe. So what we are doing, uh, the city engineer and I, Scott Peterson, are on the uh, pre-design team. We're working to make sure that their public outreach hits us hits the right areas within our, our uh, city and that also we're considering what the interests of our downtown are as they go through the design phases. So we're we're only in our second meeting. Uh, this will continue to evolve and we'll continue to give you updates on it. And then the last thing, uh, just reporting out on our on-call roster summary uh, and our operational metrics there at the end of the report. So that concludes, Mayor, back right. to you. Thank you very much. Any questions for Director Roberts? Uh, go ahead. Oh, no questions. Thank you very much, Director Roberts. And <laughs> I'm going to stop touching the button. <laughs> uh, we're now going to go to our finance department and Director Hassert. Director Hassert, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, normally I'm just real quick and tell you the reports in your packet and I'm here for questions, but there are a couple of things that I did want to bring up tonight. 
one of which is not in the, in the report, um, but is a subsequent item that just happened as of Monday night. As you know, we are in the process of doing a branding project. Um, council had approved the contract with J. Ray, and I'm happy to report that phase one is now officially complete. As of Monday night, we completed the last uh, focus group. Um, phase one included the survey that I know most of you have taken. Um, as well as conducting some focused business interviews and then two focus groups. So now we're going into phase two, which is analysis of the information. Um, Jay Ray will be anal analyzing that and then coming back to myself and Katie here in a couple of weeks with a draft. We have a, a meeting set up on May 30th to um, bring that draft to the what we are calling the brand leadership team at which point afterwards we will uh, we will cycle up our brand ambassadors um, to start talking about what came out of the analysis and what our three Ps are looking like, which is position, promise, and personality. Um, that is anticipated to be done by the end of July. And then we go into phase three, which is brand visuals. And that's when we get all of you guys. And when I say you guys, of course, council, um, but also our other boards involved, um, as we start getting to what the brand is going to start looking like and the color scheme and things like that. So that hopefully with phase four is when we will start implementing the brand. And that is we're, we're on track with our timeline and that's expected to be done no later than turn of the year. So I wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think there is a question, but and then I wanted to talk about REAP for a moment. Excellent. So. Thank you. Councilmember Kenny, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Director Hassert, I'm just curious who is on the brand leadership team and who are the brand ambassadors and what does ambassador mean? So the leadership team is Mayor Thomas, Deborah Knight, myself, Katie Darrow, and Mark Newman. Um, so it's a core group of course officials and staff. The brand ambassadors, we have some folks that we are highlighting. We have reached out to half of them. Um, but we have not com committed to, or we have not contacted all of them yet. So I don't really want to share too many names, but ideally what we were trying to find is people who are community leaders, not necessarily that they own businesses or, but have some influence are connected so that we're not just getting their input, but their, their peer group in a sense. Um, and so where the focus groups were a commitment of one meeting or one hour long phone call. Um, the brand ambassadors are committing to about three to four meetings. And so we want to make sure they're comfortable with that as well. Got it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Um, Director Hassard, go ahead. Okay. So the other item that I wanted to bring up was real estate excise taxes. As you know, when you guys gave us the authority to do the bond ordinance, um, we are targeting first quarter percent REIT to come in, and I'm sure that you saw the February numbers did not look promising. However, I'm happy to report while this report that's in the packet is through March, we now also have our April numbers, and we're definitely back on track. In fact, we are now about 14,000 ahead of budgeted expectations through April. Um, with that, when I was looking at, say, uh, month over month, so for example, March's numbers, if you look at March's numbers, the, the numbers that we received in 2023 are actually the second highest receipts that we have seen in a March period over the last six years. So since 2018, that trend held for April as well. So while you compare that to, say, the construction sales tax that we received for March um, was you know just over 8% and last year's average was over 10%, tells us construction is slowing down, but houses for some reason are still bucking the trend here and they're still selling. And we're starting, you know, you know our last couple of months of REIT have been proving that out. Um, so that, uh, at least from my perspective, makes me feel a whole lot better about our path with regards to the bonds for the municipal campus and potential other investments that may come our way. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I'm available for questions. All right. Any other questions for Director Hassert? All right. Thank you very much, Director Hassert. Let me go ahead and move on to uh, City Clerk and Records Department uh, with Clerk Wyckoff. Clerk Wyckoff, go ahead. Did we do it again? Okay, no. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council again. 
Um, in, in your packet is the first quarter of 2023 report. And just gonna highlight a couple of things out of there. Um, the first is the State, Ar State Archives uh, Local Records Gr Grant Program. Um, as you may recall, uh, we applied for and received about $47,000 from the State Archives to digitize a bunch of community development records. Uh, they have sent uh, four installments of records to the vendor already, and the fifth installment is being sent out this month, may actually have already been sent out by now. Uh, the second item I want to highlight is public records requests. Um, there were increases in January and February, and March stayed pretty consistent with last year. Uh, the numbers are in your packet. Um, the next item is our record roundup days. Um, when I wrote the report, we had only had two roundup days. We had our third roundup day yesterday. Um, and with our first two, um, I estimate that we have recycled and or shredded approximately 12,500 pounds of paper. Um, and we have sent or arranged to send at least 10 boxes of records to the state archives. So this is incredible work that the entire staff is doing. And if you ever wanna come by, it's the fourth Monday of each month and it's, it's actually kind of fun in my world, sorry. Um, the next item, uh, Sherry Simons and our public records officer put uh, together an update on a case law, um, Cantu versus Yakima School District. Um, the school district violated the Public Records Act, and we wanted to show council and the public what we are doing to um, be risk averse, if you will, in the Public Records Act. So there is a table um, in the pack in the packet that shows things that the court found against the school district, and then things that the city is doing to um, mitigate those risks. And if anybody has any questions about uh, specifics, uh, Sherry Simonson is available. Um, lastly, I wanted to highlight our interns. Um, many of you know our two interns as they are locals. Zach Humphreys is currently an intern with the city. Uh, he helped everyone that went to National League of Cities get their um, all their travel and itineraries figured out, as well as uh, the economic economic alliance fly-in that I think is happening this next month. He helped with all the legislative session tracking um, and coordinated that 522 summit that happened just recently. He's also a staff assistant to Chisab, uh, EDAB, and the SLT group. And then Haley Petty, I can't forget Haley because she was she was my helper for uh, the entire summer and into fall. And she I just wanted to say she created a master list of ordinances and resolutions and a historical roster of all of our boards and commissions, which has literally saved me hours, hours of time trying to find information. She also started with 62 boxes of clerk records that I had her go through. She uh, transferred 28 of them to the state archives, destroyed 18, and was left with only about 16 boxes until Mr. Worthen found me about 12 more the other day. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and then last but not least, in honor of Administrative Professionals Day, which is tomorrow, I wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, Sherry Simonson. She is my right hand person and all the other admin staff that work for the city. Um, they are amazing and you have a great staff. Thank you. Happy Thank South. you, Clerk Wyckoff. Any questions for Clerk Wyckoff? Councilmember Kenny, go ahead. Thank you for these reports. Um, they're really interesting. I read them word for word. They're very well put together from the lovely picture of our museum on the cover <laughs> um, to Sherry's work um, with comparing City of Monroe actions versus Yakima School District um, to your amazing shredding of all the paper and just, you know, cleaning things up. Just really appreciate everything you do. And these reports are really, really informative and interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kenny. Uh, any other questions for Clerk Wyckoff? All right. Next will be HRIT uh, from Director Worthen. 
aka seat, seat, still seat 16. Coming to you live from seat 16. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Evening Council. Uh, was that 14,000 pounds? I don't, is that what you said for a record? That that's a lot of that's a lot of paperwork and the patience that Jody has when I go in and say I found this from 1942. Do you what do you think is the retention schedule on this? And this happens countless times. So she kind of underplayed her hand in that. But Jody hasn't been here that long. But a lot of the paper still is here from a long, long time ago before Jacob was even here. Um, so and she gets a lot of these odd questions and her patience is beyond because I would have I probably would have left by now. But thanks, Jody. We couldn't do it without you. So, uh, but back to my report. Uh, so we have a couple new hires, uh, Terry and Gloriana, both in community development started recently. Um, they are both permit techs and getting the lay of the land and working hard through that, which is great. We are still looking for a couple seasonals, which is our normal time of the year, but we've already onboarded five of them, which is pretty good. So the few, previous few years, it's been a struggle, I would say, to find them, but we found five this year and we're excited about that. Anniversary list, I'll just call out four that are up there in years. Vince Bertrand has been here for 15 years. Detective Paul Henderson has been here for 16, as well as Mark Newman in Public Works. And then Ryan Anderson, who's a Public Works supervisor, has been here for 21. And that, the rest of this stuff is in my report. All right. Thank you very much. Councilmember Gamble, go ahead. I was just wondering, Director Worthen, when you were going to... Um, Clerk Wyckoff know that you actually have a warehouse of boxes and you're just slow rolling them 16 at a time. I've always learned it's about timing, Council Member Gamble. So I just slowly, I think these are yours. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you. Uh, community development report with Director Bailey coming from seat 14. Did, did you want to do IT? I figured that was in your report. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Director Bailey. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think you may members of the council. I um, well, apparently the theme tonight for uh, for department uh, updates is roundup the roundup rec records roundup day because that's the project highlight for community development as well, which is kind of an odd project to be in there. But as you can see, it's a big thing internally, and I can assure you that uh, community development has their fair share of that 12,500 pounds of paper. Uh, one of the things that I want to emphasize other than, and there's an interesting photo in the, in the department update of a before and after, which uh, my staff is very proud of. Uh, and this helps, uh, this helps to get rid of, to save some space for our move to the, to the new uh, temporary office. But one of the things that it's really going to help with is there's a lot of, we're not just getting rid of documents, we're, we're going through and scanning. Uh, so this is going to help particularly by all departments, but I know in my department, we do a lot of research for projects and having easy access to electronic uh, uh, records, as well as uh, aiding the, the, the ability for the city to respond to records requests. So it, it's um, as you can see, the staff is, is very proud of our uh, achievements in that. And it and it's, I will say, every city I've ever worked for talks about doing this. This is the first place I've ever worked that's actually doing it. And and it started out a little like it felt like people were like, oh God, are we really going to have to do that? But it was, um, it, it's it's been kind of, it's an interesting day. You might pop your head in on on uh, record roundup day because it's, it's sort of a, a different day in city hall with that said uh update on a couple of uh ongoing projects uh two two permits related to the uh, city hall renovation and the move to the temporary office we have a an upcoming uh, may 4th uh, conditional use hearing for the um for the move to the new building that our our use is a as a, as a government office is a, is a conditional use in that building. So we'll be holding that public hearing on the 4th. I fully expect that it will be a short hearing with an approval. Also, our staff has been, has been working on putting together the building permit for the city hall renovation. And one of the deadlines that was brought up at the previous um, D3 committee is the city is adopting uh, new building permits 
Um, and the deadline for going for getting permits under the under the current code and not the new code is will be the end of June. And I know that Jacob's staff has been working very hard to get that done. Everybody's aware of that deadline, and we fully expect to meet that. Uh, one eagerly anticipated decision that we did receive, as you can recall from our discussion from, about the tourist commercial zone and the outstanding uh, appeal for, uh, for the director's interpretation about regarding outdoor storage in the tourist commercial zone. We did get the decision from the hearings examiner, which did affirm the director's interpretation, which means that outdoor storage is not allowed in tour tourist commercial zone. Uh, there's still an outstanding appeal period for for um, for that action, which I believe expires on May the 9th. So we'll see if anything comes up on that. I, I want to thank everyone for that that was able to attend the kickoff meeting for the comp plan. I thought it was well attended and I appreciate the comments that that um, council has made um, uh, regarding that meeting. With that, I'll conclude my report if you have any questions. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Bailey? Uh, is the temporary encampment on your report? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next report then, which is economic development report with um, with our manager, uh, Christian. I was, I was say Tyler. I just, you know, I'll just go with seat 17. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> good evening, Council. Uh, the Economic Development Board met twice in March, uh, discussed several things, uh, a couple highlights for you. Uh, one is a stormwater source control business inspection program. Megan Darrow out of our uh, Public Works Department came and discussed this. Uh, this is, has to do with the NPDES permit, which is the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System Phase 2 permit. Got that out. Um, we're still on the 2019. It's a five-year cycle permit, but it does require starting in 2023. Um, to inspect businesses to keep our storm water safe. Uh, inspection does kind of sound like a little bit of a strong word. This is an educational program uh, where our staff will be going out and just helping educate to make sure that we're not putting things down the drain that we should not be. So they are in contact, letters are going out, and they will be uh, administering that plan over the next several years. They're, uh, over time, all businesses in Monroe do need to be inspected, and so that's kind of just going on a rolling process over a period of time. Another presentation that was received was on our Choose Monroe publication, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, Ms. Katie Darrow from our Parks Department came and gave presentation on that. And uh, the Choose Monroe publication launched in 2018. Uh, it switched to a more Monroe-centric publication in 2022. And uh, she was just looking for some input from the Economic Development Advisory Board if that is still the best way to, uh, to market and to get our information out there. So it will continue through this year. And then the board will once again reconvene and discuss going forward if that is still the best thing and then provide recommendation to council. Uh, final couple of things that are in your packet are uh, the work plan for the Economic Development Advisory Board for uh, 23 and 24, as well as your Monroe Business Newsletter for March. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. And Mr. Mayor, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any questions? All right. Thank you very much, Tyler. Um, all right. We're going to move now to the city administrator report with administrator Knight. Extended agenda. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and council. I'm looking forward to May 2nd. We do have a public safety committee meeting planned. Uh, the agenda items for that meeting include a municipal court quarterly report from Judge Ness, the police department 2022 department reports, the annual report for professional service standards and use of force, and then the draft business brochure for human services with um, Rachel Adams. We originally thought we didn't have any study session items and we're going to propose that we have a transportation benefit district meeting that night instead, but now it appears that we may have one item. And so we may have a study session that lasts 30 minutes followed by the transportation benefit district um, annual meeting. So. Uh, we still may need to have that study session. If it turns out that we don't, we'll go ahead and cancel that and alert council and just have the transportation benefit district meeting alone. Uh, looking forward then to the 9th of May, we will have a legislative affairs committee meeting with a legislative recap. And then for the regular business meeting, we have two presentations, um, one from the Snow Isle Libraries and then a legislative recap um, with our lobbyists. So the legislative 
that the legislative committee will get a recap from me because it'll be a little bit more in depth than the one that'll come forward then to council, which will focus um, mostly on items related to our uh, legislative agenda, um, both federal and state. Uh, for um, other items then for that meeting, we will have a new business item um, for potentially a mural contract and handbook updates them with um, Mr. Worthen and then a couple of reports, parks, economic development, and human services. And uh, that is it for the May 9th meeting. Right. Councilmember Gamble, go ahead. Would we need a motion to cancel the study session? No, we don't. Okay, yep. just, the, just the business. Um, well, we have used motions to cancel study sessions, but if it turns out that we need to hold that meeting, um, it will remain on the books, but if the last minute, if we need to cancel it, um, the mayor can cancel it for lack of um, agenda items. To his, um, to the other part of his question, um, does the council need to take a mo make a motion to cancel a regular meeting, or is that right. something the mayor can do as well? I have, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Is it right in now the it's scheduled? Or we're we're no. It's not that we have a regular session that, that is up right now, but I think that there, the question was in part just consistency. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we normally do a vote, and um, that yeah, no, that's all I remember. That's why I was just asking. Well, I can't remember the last time when we didn't move to cancel a meeting ahead of time. So that's what I, was I can think of lack of form where we've canceled, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? There is a thing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, is, but it's not advertised right now as a meeting, I guess. That's the bigger. It is advertised currently as a meeting. As a meeting. Yep. You're talking about the study session on yes. May 2nd. Yes, it is advertised is it, currently as a meeting. I think that's really the reason why we've always tried to be consistent because someone may plan to come to a study session. That's why we've always, I think that's why we always try to be consistent. With yeah. more for the public interaction. It's not that we can't do it, but it's a bit of a, a bummer if someone makes the arrangements and then they come to speak they want to speak before council and then it's transportation get them into the district yeah we'll still have it and i'm understanding in yeah. conversations i've had earlier this evening that we'll probably know by thursday or friday if we're going to cancel if not tomorrow okay All right, anything else? All right, um, go ahead, Administrator Knight. City Administrator real quick. There we go. So uh, council members may have seen a Facebook post uh, regarding a um, public meeting, a community meeting um, per the municipal code uh, that was originally going to be scheduled sooner um, there was a second post that went out uh, yesterday from the city um, rescheduling that meeting to Thursday, May 11th at 5 p.m. Um, it will be held at the St. Vincent de Paul Community Resource Center. Um, there's a location on Main Street, uh, and the purpose of the meeting is to share information about um, the safe parking program. And just to be clear, um, under the city's temporary encampment codes, uh, this is the applicant's meeting, so it's not, it's not the city's meeting. Um, and it is the applicant who has the choice um, in the code to select a couple of different ways in order to advertise that meeting. Um, and those ways include the city's website, a post at the location, a post in the newspaper. And so it was posted um, both on the city's website and in the Everett Herald. Um, the Facebook post isn't part of the regular process and probably won't be part of the process moving forward because, again, that's not codified within the municipal code. Our municipal code follows um, the state's um, minimum standards, um, and that was what the council and um, the community had decided at that time when we adopted that code a couple of years back. So that um, temporary, um, or excuse me, that um, community meeting is scheduled, and I think we are um, wanting to make sure that if there is a quorum or expected to be a quorum of council attending that, that we do notice um, that in advance. 
So with that said, do do we have people that do we have council members that anticipate being there on May 11th? May 11th? Thursday, May 11th. Okay. All right, if you find that you may be attending, if you could just let us know um, by May 8th. <laughs> Go ahead, Council Member Gamble. Is there, is there any reason why we wouldn't just notice this as a potential form? I mean, well, we can notice it as a potential form. Yeah, I think that's that would probably be the best. Okay. Right there, 5 p.m. Okay, and um, the and just checking with um, Clerk Wyckoff, did did the uh, email get sent to the council? Um, Director Bailey, go ahead. So a, a new notice uh, for the community meeting will be sent out by code. It's the applicant is the one who is supposed to send out the notice. So it's being revised by the St. Vincent de Paul staff. And I suspect that that will be sent out to council tomorrow and it will reflect the date that, that, um, uh, that Deborah had mentioned in her report. So Apologize for the confusion. This is the first one of these applications that we've done, and it has a very unique uh, noticing process that is very different from what our normal one is. So. Thank you. Council Member Anford. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, we already received the email, and it's and I already responded to you. You're just so busy getting rid of all the Recycle Mondays. It's, <laughs> You probably didn't see my email to you that uh, that I'm planning to attend. So, thank you. All right. Uh, anything further on this topic, okay, Deborah? Do you have anything else? I don't know. Next slide. Is there another? Yeah, there we go. I wanted to uh, just alert the council that the wayfinding signs, the fabrication of the wayfinding signs, is wrapping up. Uh, we did see the contractor out there the last couple of weeks. Um, putting in the slabs for the signs. And so we anticipate that the contractor will be back here in the next couple of weeks installing these um, lovely new wayfinding signs. So I just wanted to give uh, council a, a preview of um, what those signs are looking like. So you see a couple of park signs there on the far right, and then the wayfinding signs in the middle, and then kind of the complete package there on the on the far right. I say right to begin with left and then middle, then right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's it. All right. Thank Kudos you. Kudos to, to um, Scott Peterson and his team for continuing to manage that project. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Hanford, you had a follow up? Thank you, Mayor. I was just wondering what the last date is that we're going to have for a council meeting in these chambers before the remodel begins. Do we have that yet? Jacob? Seat 12. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought this was mine. Yeah, it is. I would guess it will be between the middle of June and the middle of July. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And at that time, my gavel will be, will be replaced with a sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. Um, Mayor's report. So I would go ahead and suggest you take a look at Monroe this week for updates from the last two weeks. Um, second, just a couple of bits of good news, I guess, from the legislature. And again, uh, this is subject to the governor signing the final documents, but uh, state operating budget, we have $200,000 toward uh, human services, which is great. Um, we also uh, currently have $1.1 million for construction for the uh, Monroe Therapeutic Court, which is awesome. And then uh, we had some changes occur with the uh, State Route 522 and Paradise Lake Road interchange and also the widening, uh, which you can see listed there. So um, if I'm not mistaken, the, the amount of money that had been put in the budget previously was way in the future and now it's uh, in closer years. So 
it's not that it's going to get designed or that right away will be acquired, you know, next year, but it, it's getting us closer to, to getting the project completed. All right. Does anybody have any questions about any of that? All right. I've got a couple other things too. So we, um, we, I, I would encourage you to thank our legislators, especially uh, Senator Hawkins um, and Representative Steele for their work in these areas, um, both on the Senate side and also on the House side. Um, and then I would also encourage you to, uh, to thank, uh, I was gonna say Senator Lowe, Representative Lowe. Uh, he was a big proponent for 522 along with uh, Senator Hawkins, but also Senator Leas and Senator Levick and others were part of that as well. So um, j just a lot of great work. I think that our lobbyists or um, government affairs folks did a great job this year too. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that as part of the debrief in a couple of weeks, but uh, we met with them every Friday uh, for uh, you know a half hour to an hour uh, to go over the bills that were coming up. And I think it made us a lot more effective and taught us some really good skills, I think mm -hmm. on a staff and also mayor level, so. Um, okay, uh, a couple other items. One, uh, you heard two people uh, talk with us this morning about an unhoused resident uh, in the downtown, just letting you know that staff is working with the property owner and also with, uh, with that person. Uh, so we're, as all of you are aware, there are limits on our ability to do things and we are probably as far ahead as, as many other jurisdictions in uh, working on these issues. So, um, just letting you know that we're working that issue. Uh, also, last week I attended the Blueberry uh, Park um, design uh, project that happened here in Chambers. Uh, this was on Thursday. We had probably about probably about ten to a dozen people attend, and um, a bunch of kids. Uh, so I uh, took the opportunity to encourage the kids to dream about what they wanted in in the park. And so we've blown the budget by by double what it was originally. Um, yeah, Mike's looking for money, I think. <laughs> but one of the things that was uh, that was really cool, uh, our parks board member um, Mariana and I forget her last name, Medina. Um, she talked about uh, because the design. So it's a rubber mat on the bottom, right? And the designs that originally came in really lacked context with the neighborhood. And so um, she brought up how it'd be nice to have um, uh, monarch butter butterflies and uh, brighter colors as part of the, the rubber base, the, the flooring. And so uh, staff is going back to work with, the, with them to come up with a different design than the blue with the stars or the just, just sort of what looked like a creek um, appearance. So. Uh, that was really cool. And, and I, I think that everybody had a, a really good time just sort of expressing how much they want zip lines and all these other things that if we put in, we're not going to be able to put in anything else because they require a lot of space. So, um, but that, that was a, a really good meeting. And then um, I will be attending Snohomish County tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, so uh, just letting you know that uh, that is, uh, I'll be attending that remotely. They've got a Zoom meeting for that. Um, also, we've already talked about the temporary encampment. We talked about the legislature. Uh, the last thing is Arbor Day. So <clears throat> I have a, an appointment that just came up yesterday uh, at 11 o'clock on Friday morning in downtown Seattle. Um, I may not be able to make it back in time for Arbor Day at one o'clock. And so um, Mayor Pro Tem Davis, I don't know if you're able to say a few words, um, but if you're available at 1 p.m. on Friday, I would really appreciate it. Um, and then um, I know that a couple other council members may be there as well. And uh, uh, council member Davis, what I usually do is, um, or what I did last year that I'd recommend doing again this year is inviting the president of the school board to say a few words. Um, I'm pretty certain that that's uh, Director Bumpus right now. And um, they're gonna have two classes this year uh, of what, fifth graders? Anyway, two, two classes of fifth graders, third graders, fifth graders. Chief Jolly knows they're gonna be fifth graders. <laughs> so they're gonna be two classes of fifth graders there. And it's, it's just nice having a, a, the school board president say a few words to the kids that, um, so. Um, I think that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions for me? All right. 
Well, we do have a need for an executive session. It is property acquisition person to RCW 42.30.110 subsection one subsection little b uh, for, an, for an initial 10 minutes. Um, and we will return back to this regular meeting when we're done uh, with potential action to follow. Uh, I will announce any extensions that occur, uh, which will then be announced in this Zoom meeting as well as out in the lobby. Uh, so we are now in executive session beginning at 817. For the record, this is Jody Whitehouse. Executive session has been extended eight minutes. For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional five minutes. Okay, we're now out of executive session. Did you have a slide for the motion? And um, I understand that there's a motion to add an item to the agenda. Um, okay, Council Member Davis, go ahead. So I'll move to add an item to the agenda. I have a motion from Council Member Davis, second from Council Member Hanford to add an item to the agenda. Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Council Member Davis? Yes, I uh, move to authorize the mayor to convey and execute non binding letters of intent for acquisition of the Union Bank in the Lindalo LLC properties in sub, uh, substantially the form presented to Council. Together with such minor revisions, the mayor may deem necessary and appropriate. Second from Council Member Hanford uh, to authorize the mayor to convey and execute non binding letters of intent for acquisition of the Union Bank and Nadalo LLC properties in substantial reform presented to Council. Together with such minor revisions, the mayor may deem necessary and appropriate. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Uh, this is all that we have on the agenda this evening. Unless there's objection, we are adjourned. We are adjourned. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.